Hey guys, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the psychic sister. <laughs> this is Katie Weaver and I'm here for our Friday afternoon pop-up. This is a new thing we're doing around here. We're trying to pop up with some uh, special content every week or so. And so here I am. I have something so funny for you guys today. And this happened in Rexburg years ago, but I got to thinking about it the other day and I thought, you know, somehow I think that you guys, you're kind of our kind of people. I think you might think this is funny or at least, uh, you know, fairly interesting. So I'm going to tell you about these two geniuses right here. These guys came through Rexburg several years ago. They were running marijuana from uh, California to Montana. And in the process of that, they came through Idaho, most particularly through Madison County. And something happened along the way. So their names are Leland Isla Daliente and Holland Sword. Oh, they were coming from Vegas to, to Bozeman, Montana. So they were just heading through town. And what I'm suspecting happened is that maybe they... Uh, had used a little too much of their own stuff because they got really paranoid and somehow decided that every car they saw on the road was an undercover cop, which is really funny because this is a small county. Like, I can't imagine how many undercovers we actually have, but they were convinced that they were busted and that the police were just messing with them. And they finally just got tired of it and were ready to have the whole ordeal over. So they called dispatch and confused the hell out of dispatch because they had no idea that there was a drug bust in uh, just about to happen because there wasn't. So I'm going to share with you a video clip. This comes from East Idaho News. I'm going to let you uh, get a listen to us to uh, what this sounded like. So let me pull up our tab here, and we're going to listen to what their conversation sounded like. Hi, uh, we're the two dumbasses that got caught uh, trying to uh, bring some stuff through your border, and all your cops are just driving around us like a bunch of jack wagons. So I just really would like you guys to end it. If you guys, if you could help me out with that, you just like to get, get on with it. You got caught doing what? Ah, uh, John, okay. Um, we kind of got food here, trying to bring some stuff across your Idaho water. Okay. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of your cops drive around a bunch of civilian cars that not want to pick us up. I don't know what's, what's the deal. I was just wondering if you could help us out and just end it. Okay, um... Yeah. I mean, maybe call one of them. I don't know. It's getting cold out here, man. I just want to get warm and just get on with this whole thing. So. Okay. Where uh, Where are you at right now? The University Boulevard, right next to the gas station in Applebee's. There's all your All your buddies are around us, so if you can help us. That would be great. Okay. All right. And is it just you, or is there anybody else with you? Uh, it's me and my buddy. That I brought with me, and then we have a dog that we're gonna bring back to its owner. But um, oh, okay. yeah, she's a really nice dog. She's not mean. She's a simple. So you can oh, okay, cool. Okay. She's really cool with the car. She can use some food too. So okay. Yeah. What, what was your name, man? Uh, it's Leland. Leland. Okay. All right. Hold on. Just one second. Okay. Stay on the phone with me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> nice guy. You know, I'm gonna jump in the air and put my heels Do you guys have any like guns or weapons or anything on yeah, you at all? We don't have we don't have any of that story with us. Just a little okay, cool. snack and stuff. So <laughs> I just want to make sure that just they're, they're just curious. So. Yeah, yeah. We tried walking away from the car a couple of times and having words. We tried waving them down and it didn't work. So I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I, I do have. I do have one of my uh, Mark units. He's on his way over there, so he's he's on his way to meet you. So. All right. Thank you. The police show up there, and when they get there, these two are behind the car on their knees with their hands behind their heads, <laughs> and are basically just uh, 
sitting there waiting for the police to come and arrest them. So, I mean, further proof that you're not supposed to use your own stuff. <laughs> but they were so paranoid, they thought that every car they saw were the cops. So, of course, uh, you know, as I'm sure you can imagine, they did get arrested. No big surprise there, right? They had with them 20 pounds of marijuana. So that's a pretty good street value. And, you know, here in Idaho, that is still super illegal, especially when this happened. So these, uh, these homeboys went to jail and they got charged. So when they go to sentencing, one of them, Leland, the guy, Isla, the guy who made the call, he actually, on day of sentencing, they drug tested him. He had marijuana, cocaine, and another controlled substance in his system. So he got an enhanced charge because, you know, the judge wasn't super impressed with that. So at the end of the day, Sward was given a five-year sentence and ended up with a suspended judgment and went on probation for five years. Valiente, however, because he had all the stuff still in his system, he ended up sentenced to one and a half to eight years in prison. So, you know, it probably didn't pay off, right? Yes, Bianca, correct. Don't use your own stuff. <laughs> Moonbeam, I wondered about the dog. I never heard ever again what happened with the dog. I would imagine that she ended up in the uh, jail or not the jail jail well the doggy jail she probably went to the pound here we actually have a really good rate of rehoming so i sure do hope she got rehomed and then again maybe her owners actually you know came and got her we're not that far from bozeman i'm assuming that's where she was going so it all ended up okay in the end for her i hope but not for these two fools so this case cracked me up when I heard it. I died laughing when they said, no, we don't have guns, just a lot of snacks. <laughs> I'll just bet you do. So there you go. Don't use your own stuff. Don't call the police and turn yourself in. <laughs> the poor dispatcher had no idea what was going on, which just makes the whole thing funnier. So that's our pop-up. Do want to tell you that there's been another big development today in the De Belvalo case. They just keep on coming. So today, the prosecutor filed a motion that would allow him to bring in a special prosecutor from out of state. They are looking at a woman from Missouri who is well practiced in capital murder cases. And they said that they need some extra help with this case. So why is that so significant? Because there's no murder charges. So does that make us think there are murder charges coming down the pipe real soon? I'm thinking yes. So all of that is going to go to court in April and the judge will have to make some decisions. So we feel like a few things about that are significant. I mean, they're going to be ruling, of course, on the ex parte restraining orders that have been filed. They're going to be ruling on this, which is such a big deal. And on the bringing in a special prosecutor, a few thoughts that we had. Uh, first of all, really happy to hear that it's a female, right? We'll take it. Uh, secondly, a non-Mormon prosecutor, I think, may be important in this case. Everybody that is associated with this case, practically everybody, is LDS. You know, Chad and Lori and the prosecutor, most of law enforcement, everybody. So maybe bringing someone in that has nothing to do with the church is strategic. Maybe it's not, but I think it's a good thing, an important thing. And then, of course, the idea that we're bringing someone in who has lots of experience in capital murder charges, that's foreshadowing for something. So pretty interesting. And then, of course, if on the off chance that these two yahoos ever end up getting Rob Wood thrown off of the case, we would have our other prosecutor all lined up and, you know, ready to roll with it and not delay a thing. So those are the thoughts that I've got on it. We'll see how it goes. Of course, that'll all come in April and we will keep you guys all abreast to it. But 
you know, until then, I a little birdie told me there'll be one more pop up this weekend uh, tomorrow, I think. And then we'll have all of our regular cases Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. We'll have the psychic hour on or sorry, we'll have case updates on Wednesday night at seven mountain and the psychic hour at 7 p.m. mountain on Thursday. So lots more fun stuff to come. But thanks, you guys so much for being here. You have been listening to True Crime Paranormal with this psychic sister. Take care.